Before moving on, I want to discuss the interpretation of omega and k in some more depth. Now, omega is the angular temporal frequency, that is the angular frequency in time, which is 2 pi divided by the period of the wave in time. And k is the angular spatial frequency, so it's 2 pi divided by the period of the wave in space, which is the wavelength. So they behave the same way because they're constructed in the same way. Omega is the temporal frequency and k is the spatial frequency, both given in radians, in this case radians per second, in this case radians per meter. Now the change in phase as a function of time is the angular frequency in time multiplied by the time period that you're interested in. So the temporal angular frequency multiplied by the time is 2 pi times t divided by the period. So you can see here, this is the number of periods of the wave, t divided by the period, multiplied by 2 pi. So it gives you the number of radians, if you like. How do we interpret the number of radians in a wave? Well, let's look at a sine wave, because that's a sine function acts on radians. So we have kx minus omega t is the argument of our wave. Let's look at x being a constant. So we're just looking at the effect of the angular frequency in time omega. And we choose a point in space, so x is a constant, and we look at the evolution of the surface of the wave at this point, and we see that it goes up and down, and the frequency of this oscillation, the angular frequency of this oscillation is omega, with a fixed point in space. We can do the same trick to interpret the change in phase as a function of space. So kx is 2 pi times x divided by lambda, so the distance x divided by lambda is the number of wavelengths, we take that number of wavelengths and multiply it by 2 pi to get a number of radians. So here we're going to set the time constant, so instead of the wave moving it's going to be a snapshot, a frozen picture of the wave at a fixed point in time, and now we're going to look at changing the position x. So now our red dot moves along the surface of the wave. Time is constant, but now we're thinking about changing x. And if we wish, we can do some combination of this. We can have x and t changing simultaneously to give us some other function for the position of this dot. So one particularly interesting example is if kx minus omega t is a constant. So we set kx minus omega t to be, in this case, pi on 2, which is convenient because when kx minus omega t is pi on 2, it puts us at the peak of the sine wave. So in other words, this point up here. So our red dot is sitting at the maximum of the wave. Now if I want to know what the position of this red dot is as a function of time, I can rearrange this equation to solve for x. So x is, two, is pi on 2 plus omega t divided by k. In other words, it's this. We know that the argument is a constant. It's always at the peak of the wave. So this dot moves along with the peak and it's moving its position, x, is given by this function of time. If I want to know how fast this dot is moving, I could find dx dt, and that is the speed of the wave, omega on k. So this particular construction of a changing position and changing time gives us a way of easily calculating the speed of the wave. So I hope this helps clarify what the purpose of omega and k is and how we use it to understand how a wave is moving and how we understand what a wave does in space and in time in terms of its spatial frequency and its temporal frequency.